and Ethel and, and her journeys, and that was a lot of fun while she had her collar on because we got to visit about her and see where she had been. And she actually did come through and close to our ecosystem, but, but didn't come into it. Is that right? Yeah. She came close, but she went through downtown Lolo and no one ever saw her. So that was, um, that was pretty amazing. Um, so, you know, another a big part of this that we need to work on some more still is just that kind of that community engagement. We've got a little INE committee, subcommittee set up, and there's Todd McKay, who's my chair for that committee back there. Um, I think there's still some more individuals we can pull into that, and maybe even like some county individuals. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with the, the Bitterroot and just kind of the, the culture there and <laughs> the people. Um, we just know we have a bit of a challenge there to, to get convinced folks that you know, grizzly bears are coming and you need to coexist. And there's, you know, it's just all across the board. People are way on board with that and people who are not. So. Okay, so just in talking about our INE grants, we had um, $5,000 this past year for a bear ranger, which we did employ and worked all summer. Similar for the Lolo, we also have one for 6000 serve these other um, areas and then we had about twelve hundred fifty dollars for our backcountry horsemen to have some bare wear materials and um, go visit schools and, and so that was really successful so we were very honored to get that money and think we put it to really good use so here's what the bear ranger was up to um, you know we kind of cooperated the lolo and the bitterroot and we also had some additional recreation staff help develop and implement some um, bear aware programs. We had a lot of face to face interaction um, between our bear ranger and the public recreation recreating on the, on the forest. You know, we have a lot of, um, as most places, we have a lot of urban interface. We have a lot of people with, you know, chickens and bird feeders and all kinds of things right up against the, like the forest ground boundary and heavily wooded areas that we need to communicate with. We also targeted high-use campgrounds, trailheads, recreation areas, and rental facilities between May and September. And here's just some pictures, I think, of uh, the educational materials we distributed and talked to the public about bear safety. Certainly, you know, leave no trace, um, hiking, camping, and bear country, bear identification, proper food storage and food storage orders. And virtually we have these materials almost at every trailhead. And a kiosk that's, um, that's in the area on the forest. We have some bearware kits that we developed um, for 16 of our volunteer campground hosts. You can, was that just on the very top? Okay, so they contain bear safety information, brochures, activities for kids, um, the indoor bear spray, and uh, training canisters. And also, we had our community events. And this is, you know, one of the ways we can kind of outreach to, to the community and kind of get them thinking along these lines. Uh, the Hamilton's Farmers Market, you know, great attendance there. And anytime the bear trailer was there, there was just like a crowd around there. And I know my my kids and family wanted to be over there all the time too, and hanging around those bears and, and talking to Chuck. And Chuck's still there. Chuck on that in the back there, our bear wear, wear guy. Um, National Get Outdoors Day, uh, Junior Forest Ranger Day was something um, that we held on the forest. Uh, First Fridays, uh, Downtown Hamilton is also an opportunity. And there were probably a few others. So our Bitterroot Backcountry Horsemen are very engaged with this, and Fred Weisbecker is, he used to be game warden, I think, in North Carolina. He's very much into this and um, loves to do it, loves to go to the schools and you know, talk about bear wear. He's always, uh, he's always in that boat, coaching people and, and talking about that. Also had classes presented to seventh graders, Hamilton, Darty, Corvallis, and Florence schools, and adult classes that were in Hamilton, Darty, and don't end programs. So I think we really got some feelers out there and some, some good contacts were made. So some of the topics, bear biology. How do you recognize you know, the difference between uh, black bear and grizzly bear? And certainly have a lot of black bears in the bitter roots. So something to think about in some of those other color phases. Folks can get confused about the lighter colors and the cinnamon bears. Um, the, the food storage is still a work in progress that some of the forests um, have food storage orders. 
currently. We don't have it across the board in the ecosystem. So I think that's one of the things we'll work on this year. Um, how to use the bear spray was a big part of um, what we demonstrated. And then how to react and survive the close bear camp. Our grant funds um, purchase brochures, skull molds, and our bear practice canisters, and we have matching funds for our um, backcountry. <coughs> Okay, Defenders of Wildlife, Montana Fish and Wildlife Park Partners. We had seven bear resistant 90 gallon containers to contain residential garbage at sites with history of conflict. So that, that's a huge improvement. We have Aaron and Edge here. <laughs> well, it's something, isn't it? I mean, it's compared to a couple years ago, you know, we're, we're proud that we kind of started with that. So that's pretty awesome. We, um, Presentation to Bittery Beer, um, beer Keepers. Well, there's a lot of beer keepers in particular. But beekeepers, non electric fencing. People, you know, got to realize bears like honey. And continue to work with local waste haulers on sanitation issues. I probably one of our biggest things. Is that still working? No. It is. Well, maybe press the button. Try to push the green button. Oh. Okay. There you go. There you go. Watch that. Okay, so yeah, the sanitation issues is probably a big piece of this mm -hmm. and for, for interactions with our carnivores. We also had bitter root culture. God, it's just going out of there. Bitter root culture camp, <laughs> which is a, a thing that's put on by the RCMD, uh, bitter root RCMD, and they have like middle school age kids. They come together and they just learn all kinds of things. Well, maybe the about. <laughs> And I can just talk really loud if it comes to that. But here's some pictures. This um, fellow in the purple shirt, that's Fred Weisbecker. You know, he really enables our I&E effort, um, really gets off on doing that. He's got all sorts of materials and skulls, and you can kind of see them interacting here and um, passing those around. So he gives them a real thorough education. And he gives them a quiz, too. And, uh, you know, they have to answer some questions. They don't get away. So the bearware class at Hamilton High School, and here's some pictures of that, and I guess there was a, a shooting associated with that time, I'm not sure. I guess it was a target or something. Oh, the inner canisters. Okay, so they're very receptive. We had the, once again, the Hamilton's Farmer's Market. That's what that looked like with the bear mounts. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> and I think that's my last slide. And so, um, you know, I was interested in the conversation we had yesterday about how do we, you know, make things kind of consistent, how do we tier to our five-year action plan, and, and so I think that would be really good um, to kind of get that in line so that we're reporting out on the things that you need to hear and um, showing progress, and maybe we need to show some measurements, you know, in that criteria about here's, here's what we're going to achieve this year, and here's how close we got, and I think that would be really great to just kind of see it across the lines about, um, you know, we're at what we're striving for. So um, just kind of in closing, I guess for 2016, we, you know, probably will be continuing to put emphasis on our, you know, information, education, outreach, and the sanitation efforts. So that would be, you know, both the uh, schools and the <coughs> things that we did here, you know, plus maybe a little bit more community outreach. We're trying to get like a county person on our IE. Um, group might be really helpful and then just working with that interface and communities with a bear ranger um, definitely so we're, we're glad to be able to continue that on um, the linkages I guess between ecosystems we've talked about that some and several folks have raised that as maybe something we need to look at a little bit more you know, Ethel came through so there must be one um, and I guess I would just offer to folks who are on my subcommittee Mr. Todd, um, I think Colleen's here, but do you have anything else to add? I think that about covers it. Really, I think it's important that we redo and reevaluate the five year plan for the rest of the year to make sure that we've got a clear focus for the next few years on issues that are important and appropriate time to do that practice. And yeah, that's a good thing. You're ready to present it to the IPDC. Yeah, because, you know, right now our you know, we could show more stats, perhaps, on exactly what we accomplished in visitor contacts and whatnot, but our our bullets right now were kind of intangible. You know, we don't have, like, set up measures for that, so you know, they're very worthy. It might be good to have that, that and I will put that on the, the agenda for sure. So, 
Todd, anything else? Okay, so any questions? Do we have a written document that we put in the record? We can send you, I guess we can send that to you. Or something. Can you send it to Alan? Oh, yeah. Sure. But even your friend. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And me. Okay. <laughs>